I mean, I've watched this, these guys attacking. Suddenly these guys appeared from somewhere with sticks. These looked like commandos. And I thought, you know, they're here to defend me because, you know, my life is at threat. So the, the judge had ordered that I have to be protected. So I thought they'd come to defend me. And I thought, God, looks like there's some terrorist in the room. And then I discovered it was me they were after. So it was um, shocking, really, the way they beat up everyone. And then they took me like some sort of a terrorist. I had no access to information. So I had no idea what was going on outside once they abducted me. You describe it as an abduction. Who do you blame? It was the army which abducted me. And nothing happens without the permission of the army chief. That's how the army works. So clearly, he had ordered the abduction. We are hearing from the military and the government that the security concerns around you and the threat and risk has been so high that this was the only option, that you forced their hand. You know, this is such nonsense. First, they attacked my house for 24 hours. They wanted me to appear in a, in a court in Islamabad, in a magistrate court. I had already agreed to attend. The law says that had I given them an assurity bond that I would attend the court, they couldn't arrest me. They refused to take the assurity bond. Attacked my house for 24 hours. We couldn't sit inside. There was so much tear, tear gas shelling and the, you know, people had broken bones and stuff. So, look, they are on a plan. And what is the plan? The plan is they are petrified of elections. The gap between us and all the other parties is so huge now that they are petrified that they will be wiped out. So they have decided that the only way they'll allow elections is if I'm inside jail or killed. There are two attempts, been two attempts on me. And most of my senior, senior leadership should be jailed too. This is what they've done. They've used this to put the entire leadership of PTI in jail. What will you do if you're rearrested? Because there is a very real threat with more than 100 charges against you that you could be. Well, on the last count, it was 148. So I'm reaching my century and a half. Um, and they're all, you know, bizarre charges like sedition. I mean, um, serious charges that I have uh, treachery against my... Corruption, contempt of court. The corruption case on what, you know, what was the corruption case? What is your strategy if you are rearrested? Well, no strategy. I'm mentally prepared to go into jail. As I said before leaving for Islam, but I said I'm prepared. But the, the, the point is that it is, their intention is not because I've broken some law. The intention is that they want me out of the electoral race. This is the election year. How do you lead with so much of your party in chair? Well, I mean, I just, the remnants I gathered today, today and I've had a meeting with them and we're trying to chalk out a strategy. I'm going to go out in public and start my uh, mass contact from Wednesday onwards. So. Um, well, we, we will carry on uh, hoping that the, uh, the Supreme Court will announce an election date in three weeks' time. Can you reassure voters that you're even going to be around for it, let alone your leadership, the rest of your party? Look, what might happen, God alone knows what might happen. I mean, I have, uh, I'm lucky to be alive. No one thought I would survive yesterday because they had already got police contingent from another province that the moment I had got bail from these cases, the police was ready to take me uh, in jail on another case. But the judges stood up. And this is what has shocked the military establishment. Because the judges finally decided, they said, look, we, we are not going to again get him into jail. And everyone knows trumped up charges. And the result would be public unrest. So the judges took a stand. I mean, we are witness, witnessing history in Pakistan now, being new history being written. Your arrests spark widespread and violent protests. We saw military installations set light, houses attacked, government buildings. Do you condemn that violence, violence that the government say your own supporters carried out? 
I condemn, I have always condemned all violence. The military has been the bedrock of this country for decades. Do you think you can run the nation without the support of the army? Because you run that risk of alienating them. No, look, look, things change. Countries evolve. Thinking changes. We started off as a security state and had straight away martial law where the army ruled for 10 years. But right now, I mean, I have never seen such oppression. I mean, there's total clampdown on media. I can't appear on live television. If journalists have picked up, beaten up, tortured, custodial torture of my senior members, uh, social media activists, it's never happened like this before. This is the same military that helped bring you to power in the first place. It seems like somewhat of an ideological U-turn. Absolutely not. They you don't think they, they never sure. brought me into power. I, my party was the most popular party. All the opinions polls said that. We won the election, but the army didn't oppose me. That's a, that's a difference. This feels like a very febrile moment when the country is politically polarized, economically spiraling. Voters want to see some hope. How are you going to cool things down and reassure them that politics is even worth voting for right Look, now? Look, this is the election year. Elections are supposed to be held this year. All, if you want the solution to Pakistan's problems, they are elections. Hold free and fair elections. Let the people decide who they want to give the mandate. And Pakistan will stabilize. Problem is that they are all worried. The entire 12 party coalition is petrified along with the military establishment that my party will sweep the elections because out of 37 by-elections, we have swept 30 of them. So because they are worried, they, they are trying to delay the elections. That's all. So all we want is free and fair elections. Do you have faith in the judiciary? And where do you think democracy in Pakistan is right now? Well, the democracy in Pakistan has never taken such a battering as it has right now. I mean, all our fundamental rights are violated. This sort of thing has never happened. No political figure has ever had 100 and almost 50 cases. And then his house raided. Once they attacked for 24 hours, then when I was away, they threw an armored car, they broke through my door, raided my house. My wife was all alone by herself. It's never happened before. So democracy is an all-time low. The only hope we have is the judiciary.